Sherry Nelson is a really good listener. Good thing because she's spending a lot of time in the desert south of Tucson listening for quail and listening to radio signals that lead her to exciting and sometimes grisly discoveries. We'll catch up with Sherry later. First, let's take a look at what brought her out here to begin with. Gamble's quail are adapted to survive in Arizona's deserts, but they rely on winter rainfall for reproductive success. In wet years, they thrive. In years of drought, quail populations can plunge quite dramatically. It makes conserving and protecting them a challenge for the Arizona Game and Fish Department. The truth is, there's, uh, it's, it's awful hard to actually manage quail populations and manage quail abundance in the desert because they're so driven by that winter precipitation. Uh, but still, as a department, we would like to do something uh, in terms of active management to do everything we can to, to bolster and, and help the quail populations. One answer might be found on golf courses. Gamble's quail that live on or near golf courses have constant access to water and food, so their populations remain relatively steady. That's why Game and Fish is partnering with the University of Arizona on a two-year research project to find out if moving golf course quail to the desert can help jumpstart declining populations. People might think that this research is, uh, is, is just a no-brainer, that you take quail and put them out in the desert and they're fine, but we know from the past that pen-raised birds released out into the wild have a terrible, uh, terrible survival rate. And, and, and agencies stopped doing that back in the 50s because most of the birds were dying. They just weren't, they didn't have what they needed to survive in the wild. Golf course quail are still wild birds, so they just might have what it takes to survive in the desert. This research is meant to find out. So today we're trapping quail, um, specifically Gamble's quail. It started in early 2019 when Game and Fish captured quail living on and around golf courses. At times they used a trap that looked like something straight out of Looney Tunes. For sure, that's exactly what we joked about when we decided to use that trap. Your stick and box trap, yeah. We started off with our traditional dove traps, which are like walk-in funnel traps, and the quail were too smart for those. They'd walk in, eat the seed, and walk right back out. We had a lot more success with the Wiley Coyote Acme trap where the person actually just pulled the string and the trap fell on the quail. <laughs> it does not get any more fundamental than that. Once captured, biologists process the quail. Okay, grab the one. They draw blood and swab throats for testing to make sure the quail don't carry any unwanted diseases. Each bird is given a band, it's an identification tag. If we ever catch that bird again, um, we, kinda, we have a running history of that bird. They place a radio transmitting necklace on every female so they can locate them after they're released. There are two release sites both in southern Arizona. Owners of the King's Anvil Ranch and the Santa Margarita Ranch generously gave researchers access to their private property. That brings us back to Sherry. It's just always really peaceful coming out here and there's a lot of really amazing things to see and I love quail. Sherry's a University of Arizona master's student of wildlife management and conservation and this research will be the basis of her thesis. 99% of my time is dedicated to being out here, tracking them down, seeing if they're alive or not, if they're doing well. We're doing a 15 mile route, stopping every mile to listen for how many Gamble's quail we hear. For three minutes at each stop, she listens for the one note mating call of male Gamble's quail. Yeah, I'm already starting to hear some, so they're already out. Counting calls is a way to measure the potential for productivity. Try to see if I could find some nests. Tracking the females with radio telemetry provides a glimpse at their reproductive success. I'll take a GPS point when I find the bird. The radio signals can lead to a nest full of eggs. It can also lead to some disappointing discoveries. There has been some crime scenes that I've found. Sherry documented quite a few quail and their eggs that fell victim to predators. Hawks are a big problem at both sites. The study is far from over, but here are some early data. In 2019, researchers released a total of 198 quail. 75 were radio-collared females. 
By late summer, at least 26 of those females were still alive. The number could be slightly higher because 10 radio signals are unaccounted for. So by monitoring what percentage of them survive and, and how long they survive and compare those between the areas, we can learn a little bit more about whether this is effective in actually getting quail out onto the landscape and having them live and, and reproduce. The study will continue for one more year before we'll know if golf course quail have a future in the desert.